break. What did you do? <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Ashley from the channel Frolic Through Fiction. Over there we typically do cozy vlogs, talk about fantasy books, romantic books, with the coziest of vibes. And today, Book Break have invited me on to do a huge fantasy book haul, which I am so excited for. I did not expect this, honestly. This turned up on my doorstep and I was like, what on earth? Because this is huge, we have got some exciting times ahead of us. So this box includes some recent fantasy releases and also some upcoming fantasy releases. So let's crack it on open and see what's inside. I'm so excited. I have been holding off opening this, waiting for you guys to join me. So let's do it. In true fantasy form, I have a tiny dagger to help me open this. There are so many books in here. Alrighty. Mm hmm So, let's delve into, I can't even pick it up now, this lovely lot and see what we've got in store. Oh, this is so exciting. <laughs> Already I can see one of my ride or dies. It's so pretty in person, I haven't got a copy of this yet. The Atlas Complex by Olive Blake. This one, oh my god, I adore the series so, so much. Olive Blake is just an absolute genius. I adore her. This is the third installment within the Atlas Six series and the Atlas Six honestly is one of my favourite books. It is a fantasy dark academia book that is just oh, top tier when it comes to character dynamics, the dark academia vibes and I am so scared for this book as well because it is the final within the series and I don't quite think you can tell but these books up here are all Olivia Blake books. I am such a fan of hers and she has been known to uh, turn up the dramatics so how that's going to go with the series finale, I don't know. But The Atlas Six, the first book in the series, follows six different characters who have actually taken part in this competition of sorts. None of them enter willingly, but they're all chosen for being like the best of their kind, as they're all very talented magicians. They all can do magic of some kind. And so they're entered into this competition to try and become part of the Alexandrian society, which is basically just this huge magical secret society. And whether they wanted to join it or not, they pretty much have to survive it. So the stakes are high, the tensions are high, and so is my blood pressure when reading it, but for the best reason. So if you haven't read The Atlas Six yet, please do. And if you, like me, have been anticipating this book coming out, then please just come and yell at me in the comments because it's, it's intense. And I mean, these books have beautiful illustrations included in them as well. So it's just an extra added little treat, honestly. Oh, love it. <laughs> Next up, I can see another one, which is hugely anticipated by so many people, and that is Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare. This is the very highly anticipated adult book from Cassandra Clare, which is the first, I believe, of her stepping outside of the Shadowhunter realm. So obviously, Cassie Clare is just so known and loved for her Shadowhunter series, but this is the first time we are seeing her do something a little bit different with that. This is, I believe, her adult debut, and it is a chunky one as well. She is not holding back for her fans. This one is a super interesting concept as well, because a Swordcatcher in this world is somebody who basically pretends to be the crown prince for his own safety. So he takes on the guise of the prince and whenever the prince is expected at some sort of event and there's some sort of security or safety issue, then the sword catcher will be sent in to magically become the prince and essentially just take his place so that if there is a serious threat and the prince would lose his life, he doesn't actually, his sword catcher does. And so we're following this duo. So we have the crown prince and also his sword catcher who were raised together, trained together. And the sword catcher basically just lives for the prince. And so we're seeing that dynamic, but we also start to see some other aspects being introduced as there are some underground criminals who somehow gradually get more and more involved with people like the sword catcher, especially when there is a failed assassination attempt on the prince. And so we have this huge political storyline that so many people are going to love. And I think that even if you ended up falling behind on the Shadowhunters world and the whole universe that she's built up over there, this is very much a new fresh story that you can jump into and end up loving because it's gonna be so interesting seeing what she does with this entirely new concept. 
<laughs> the more I take books out of this, the more I'm like uncovering the layer underneath and <sighs> there's some good books in here. Oh my God. Oh my God, seeing this in person. We have The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent, which is the first book within the Crown of Nyaxia series. This is a much beloved romance series that has taken the world by storm, honestly, and it has now been republished in these beautiful hardcover editions and I have been waiting for this day because I read these a little while ago but I haven't seen them in person yet and I've just been longing to add this to my romanticy shelves. I've got like a whole section of romanticy books on my bookshelves and I'm so glad that I can finally add this to them. This one is advertised as The Hunger Games meets Vampires because we have this huge deadly competition. We're following a woman called Araya who is basically at a very young age adopted by an incredibly powerful vampire and raised by him and so she is a human living within the world of vampires which obviously is incredibly dangerous for her and she has been brought up and necessarily trained in how to survive a world that is quite literally the natural predator of her and so not only is her life already dangerous enough, but she does end up entering this competition in which all of her rivals are these vampires. And so she not only has the competition itself to try and win so that she can have this better shot of freedom and live in a life where she's not just a prey to everyone around her, but she quite literally has to prove that by managing to stay alive amongst a scene that is not built to protect her. And so to survive this tournament, she ends up having to become the allies of some of the people who have literally made and created to be her enemy. And lo and behold, with it being a romanticy, you can probably imagine where that's going. This is such a good story. If you haven't read it already, add it to your TBR because I was just so enthralled with the dynamic between our two main characters in this book. And it's such a page turner because the competition is just, oh, really gets the heart rate going, I have to tell you. <laughs> oh my God, we have one which I have seen so, so much hype for and so much love for this series because we have Bookshops and Bone Dust by Travis Baldry. This one is the epitome of cozy fantasy. The first book, Legends and Lattes, I have just heard so many good things about and I cannot wait to read these two books back to back just in a coffee shop, living my best cozy fantasy vibes because the love for this series is just unmatched, honestly. In the first book, Legends and Lattes, we are following these fantasy characters who quite literally have retired from their adventuring ways and they just open a coffee shop and they live this somewhat small and cozy life. I don't know if any of you guys have heard the trend in audio that's like, I think I like this little life. <laughs> it reminds me of that. The epitome of that audio is Legends and Lattes, honestly. So they're just having this slow living moment. But you know, being in a fantasy world, having a coffee shop in the fantasy world doesn't always make for the calmest of coffee shops. And so they have some interesting characters as their customer base and we get to hear all of their stories over a lot of coffee and pastries, which honestly just sounds perfect to me. And this is the sequel. So we're returning to this world, but instead of a coffee shop, this time we have a bookshop. So just another location that us bookworms tend to gravitate towards and I'm so excited to see this beautiful fantasy version and as well these always have some really cool artwork underneath like look at them I am excited to meet these characters and just see what all the fuss is about honestly next up we have one which is part of a series that every single time I see the covers for these I am just so drawn to them because I think these are beautiful but this is Heart Song by TJ Klune look at how cute the walls are it's almost like a material animation or like stop motion, is it called? And this just has the most beautiful autumn vibes. So already I'm just like, I, I need to see what these books are all about. But I've seen, again, so much love for these. The first book is called Wolf Song and we're basically following this boy who is inexplicably drawn to this one particular family, only to find out that they are shapeshifters, they can turn into wolves at will and he is obviously fascinated by this, I mean I'm sure we all would be. But during all of this there is a murder in town which ends up, you know, derailing everything and he doesn't see the youngest boy from this family for a while until years later where he comes back and he's grown now and as they start to get to know each other again they realise that there's this, there's this bond between them that 
they should probably start thinking about and exploring a bit more and we get to explore that with them. So this again, honestly, just sounds like cozy vibes. I think that that is such a huge thing at the moment. Like people are really loving the cozy fantasy and TJ Klune is definitely one who is recommended all the time for that. So the story in this is just as beautiful as the covers are. And honestly, I think just a little quote on the back says it all because it says, memories are funny things. I carried them like scars. <laughs> The emotions already. And another one when it comes to emotions, we have A Power Unbound by Freya Mask. And I know, I know for a fact that so many of you guys are so in love with this series. I have so many people telling me about this series because this is an Edwardian inspired fantasy <laughs> that initially follows a young baron. There is this kind of large administrative error, which means that instead of having this kind of somewhat easygoing political job lined up, he ends up becoming the political liaison for a magical society. And he ends up getting into all sorts of shenanigans, trying to figure out what on earth is going on with this magical society and just reconciling the politics of the world that he's in with this magical wielding society and community that he didn't even previously know existed and so he essentially just walks into chaos and is like what on earth i'm not even meant to be here but somehow i need to fix it now and in the meantime he's getting help from this other guy and we start to see their relationship become a thing <laughs> It's just, it honestly sounds like chaos, but a really fun chaos. I think seeing this sort of limbo between non-magic wielders and magic wielders and just trying to figure out that balance within society, I imagine, is so much fun. And this is the third book within the series. So if you jump in now, you've got plenty to read and I just think this sounds incredible. There is so much praise for this. And like I said, I get recommended the series all the time. If you're a fan of historical fantasy or maybe almost things like Bridgerton, but with a little bit of fantasy in there. I think you'll be well on your way to finding a new favorite with the series. Speaking of historical fantasy, we have Scarlet by Genevieve Cogman. This one is French, French Revolution. <laughs> that is immediately all I, all I see when seeing these flags and you know, all of the different motifs on the cover. But I'm really intrigued because it says, revolutionaries want blood, but vampires bite back. Oh my God, NK Jemison has blurbed this. Interesting. I love this trend of vampires coming back. I am definitely a vampire girly. I love the gothic vibes. I love the just drama that comes with it, honestly. And I am sure this is going to be no different. So this one says that for one English maid, the stakes have never been higher. I hope that the stakes is a pun. <laughs> Because if so, that is that is smart. I like that. Revolutionary France is no place to be, especially with aristocratic vampires facing the guillotine. But the League of the Scarlet Pimpernel is determined to rescue them. And they have an ace up their sleeve. Eleanor, a lowly maid from an English estate with a striking resemblance to French royalty. For Eleanor, the League and its legendary deeds are little more than rumour. Until she's drawn into its most dangerous plot yet. The mission? Travel to France in disguise, impersonate Queen Marie Antoinette and rescue the royal family. If they succeed, it'll be the heist of the century. To carry out the League's ambitions, Eleanor will have to break every rule of a maid's etiquette. She'll disguise herself as a man, negotiate with powerful vampires, and evade the revolution's chief agent, Citizen Chauvelin. Ch Chauvelin? I am so sorry. French names, I don't know how to pronounce them unless I hear it first, and I, I don't think I've heard that one. Obsessed with the elusive Scarlet Pimpernel, he will stop at nothing to unmask him, even if Eleanor pays the price. But there's more to fear than ardent revolutionaries, for Eleanor stumbles across a centuries-old war between vampires and their fiercest enemy, and they're out for blood. Ooh! I already love how historically situated this is in terms of having characters who are inspired by real people and sort of being able to connect those dots and see how the history is rewritten into this fantasy world. And honestly, all of our history lessons would just be so much more interesting if there was vampires involved. So we get to read all about that now. <laughs> this poor maid is really going through it, having to disguise herself as a man and somehow heist Marie Antoinette. I'm excited to read about it though. Sounds like one hell of a story. I also feel like if you are the sort of person who loves this sort of disguise situation, if you do have your eye on Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare, then this one may very well also be a good one to add to your TBR because I'm getting similar vibes in this. I do think that there will be very different atmospheres and obviously they're inspired by different time frames and all these different things, but in terms of a good dupe, basically. <laughs> if you like stories where people are being tricked into thinking that someone's there when they're not and all this swapping around of identities, then I think these two will be a really good pairing. So I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued. I'm so glad this one was in here. This is 
Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. I've read a couple of books by Alex E. Harrow before and really enjoyed them. I really love Once and Future Wishes. It's just chef's kiss, honestly. And we have another one which I am so excited about. Just listen to how good this sounds, okay? Nobody in Eden remembers when Starling House was built, but the town agrees it's best to let this ill omened mansion and its lonely heir go to hell. Stories of the house's bad luck, like good china, have been passed down through generations. Opal knows better than to mess with haunted houses or brooding men. But when the opportunity to work there arises, the money might get her brother out of Eden. Starling House is uncanny and full of secrets, just like Arthur is heir. It also feels strangely, dangerously like something she's never had. A home. Yet Opal isn't the only one interested in the horrors and the wonders that lie buried beneath it. Sinister forces converge on Eden, and Opal realises that if she wants a home, she'll have to fight for it. Even if it involves digging up her family's ugly past to achieve a better future, she'll have to go down, deep down beneath Starling House to claw her way back to the light. Ooh, there's an illustration. <laughs> Look at this. Interesting. I'm not gonna show you all of them though because you'll have to read it to find out and I don't wanna ruin anything for you, but this one just sounds so good. I love, 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 love the whole, some sort of mystery related to a house and a building in particular, I think is just so eerie. And honestly, it's just the epitome of Gothic. And I know for a fact that Alexi e. Harrow is so good at writing an atmosphere. So this is just, I, I know this is gonna become so many people's new favorite book and one that we can so easily fly through as well. And honestly, I just wanna see what all of these birds are about. Like I know it's called Starling House, but why? <laughs> so many birds. <laughs> Okay, we're getting here guys, we're getting there. Next up we have one which I have been excited about for a little while now, and that is Full of Ruin and Wrath by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Jennifer L. Armentrout is honestly just such a queen of romanticy. She has so, so many books out that are romanticy. She's been writing romanticy for years and years before romanticy was even a term that people used. I have been a fan of hers from quite a young age and I very much return to loving her books now. And I'm so excited to see what this one's all about because we have this prophetic element to it. And I, if there's any sort of magic that I love to see in a book, it's this idea of prophecy and being able to predict things. So in this one specifically, we're following Kalista who has this incredibly strong intuition that has never led her astray. And because of this power that she has, she basically hides behind the protection of this one Baron because she knows that so many people are gonna be trying to fight for power over her because of her power. They want to be able to use her for her ability. But when she accidentally ends up saving the prince through this intuition that she has, she ends up getting wrapped up in this sort of complicated relationship in which she ends up becoming his companion of sorts because the Baron takes interest in the Prince and then the Prince takes interest in her and it just starts to get a little bit tricky, you know? And she basically ends up in a situation in which she has to decide whether she wants to follow her instincts or her heart. And I just, I know for a fact that Jennifer Lomachow is so good at writing like tension and really tricky relationships. So I cannot wait to see what this is all about and just have so many of my favorite elements wrapped into one book written by somebody who is just an absolute pro at romance by now. Like this is going to be addictive. I know that for a fact. <laughs> My God, what a beautiful stack of hardbacks we have here. And we're not even done yet because we do also have three paperbacks. Two of them are proofs. One of them I think might already be out. And that one is The Minuscule Mansion of Myra Malone, which honestly is just such a fun title to say. <laughs> this just, it, it honestly, it sounds so fun as well because it says that from her attic in the Arizona mountains, the recluse Myra Malone blogs about her miniature mansion. Myra's stories have created legions of fans who breathlessly await every update about the mansion, swapping theories about the enigmatic author. Myra herself is tethered to the mansion by a strange magic. Rooms appear and disappear overnight and music plays in its corridors. Across the country, Alex Rakes, heir to the custom furniture business, encounters two mansion fans trying to recreate a room. He's shocked to recognise a miniature copy of his own bedroom in his family home, which was handed down from a grandmother who disappeared mysteriously when Alex was a child. As he and Myra begin corresponding, they start to unwind the lonely paths of their twin worlds, setting the stage for a meeting rooted in loss but defined by love. Oh my god, that's just... I really love that last line. That sounds so cool. I think this sounds like a really interesting take on this magical house idea. I've read a few books that are about magical like dollhouses and I just think it's so interesting to have this 
miniature world of sorts and it calls back to a lot of fairy tales that we love. So I feel like this is almost going to have such a whimsical and magical feel to it while also pairing these two together into a love story that just sounds honestly like a child's pretend game. Like I feel like this is really going to hit the nostalgia. I can't wait to see what, what these stories are like and just see if we find out how the magic works behind these dollhouses. And then leaning back into our cozy fantasy we have Can't Spell Treason Without Tea which honestly so so good. This is by Rebecca Thorne and it just says that it's a cozy fantasy steeped in love because this one it says that palace politics just wasn't their cup of tea. Elite bodyguard Reyna and a powerful mage Kyanthi dream of leaving their dangerous lives behind and opening a bookshop serving the very best tea and cakes. After risking too much one too many times the pair finally decide to run away and make their dreams a reality. In the town of Tawny nestled in the icy peaks of dragon country they set up shop but trouble is brewing ahead. Together, Reyna and Kayinthe must face mishaps, mysteries, and a murderous queen throwing the realm's biggest temper tantrum. They'll also discover just what they mean to each other and the world. Grab a cuppa and escape into this gorgeous treat of a book, filled with cozy adventure, sapphic romance, and good feelings, perfect for fans of Legends and Lattes. I was about to say, like, this sounds like, if you liked Legends and Lattes, you need to read this book because Honestly, you could just have like a whole weekend reading both Legends and Lattes, Bookshops and Bone Dust, and Can't Spell Treason Without Tea. Just indulge in all of the pastries, the coffee, go to a coffee shop, go to a bookshop. Like you could have a themed weekend around these books. And honestly, I might do just that because that sounds great. <laughs> Oh, this just sounds so fun. I'm so excited to read it. I'm so glad that cozy fantasy is becoming more of a thing because honestly, it's just, it's such a vibe. And then last but certainly not least is one that I am so excited to see because I have been longing for this book because we have A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. There's so much hype for this book and honestly, rightly so because again, this one has vampires. In this one, we are following Arthi, who has a tea room. She runs a tea room, but it's actually a front to an illegal blood house. So her clientele is very rich and powerful vampires. And it's all behind the guise of this really nice tea room that she's got. The tea room secrets are threatened and she ends up having to make this kind of dodgy deal with a gang of outcasts in order to save her tea rooms. And it just says that it leads her into a high stake heist and the dark vampire underworld. Here she faces a dangerous conspiracy and an unexpected romance. Say less, this sounds like it would be perfect for fans of Six of Crows, but also if you are loving that vampire trend that's coming around while also loving this sort of underground criminal underworld, a gritty fantasy that you just know is going to be so addictive with this heist scenario going on. This, this is going to be it. I've also seen artwork for these characters that Hafsa Faisal has shared on Instagram and honestly that is, that was enough to convince me. So you should check out not only this book but the artwork on her Instagram because it's great. <laughs> so that my friends is one hell of a fantasy book haul. Look at how many beautiful books are here. We are being so well stocked. I cannot wait to delve into all of these, at least the ones that I haven't already and the ones that I already have done, I've loved. So, Panmark are pulling through. Thank you so much Book Break for sending me these books and allowing me to return to your channel and chat to all of the lovely people here. And thank you guys for just being excited about books with me. Like, come and chat with us down below about all of the exciting releases. Tell us if any of these are on at your TBR, which ones you've got your eyes out for and I am sure that we will fangirl right alongside you because I mean I'm just I'm honestly a bit flustered now. <laughs> I'm gonna go and find a home for these on my bookshelves and just start planning how to work my way through them, start building my TBR. But in the meantime thank you for catching up with me and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm gonna love you and leave you and I will hopefully chat to you again very soon. Goodbye!